Welcome back to my channel. I'm Joe with Smoking Joe's Pit Barbecue. On today's video, we're going to be cooking up some carne guisada, which I tried down in South Texas about a month ago, and I cannot wait to share this recipe with you. Stay tuned. All right, let's get started on this carne guisada recipe. I'm starting with a three pound chuck roast and two pounds of steak tips. Now, as you can see, the steak tips have already been cut up. So all I'm gonna do at this point is cut the chuck roast down into similar sizes. These are about maybe one and a half by one and a half, which will shrink down a little bit. So I think that's the perfect size. So for this recipe, you can use really any meat, even brisket trimming, which is really tough because it's gonna cook down for quite a long time. I think this recipe is gonna take maybe three to four hours. So you can absolutely use brisket trimmings for this recipe. Now I do wanna thank E3 Meat Company for sponsoring today's video. If you guys have not checked them out online, please do so. E3 Meat Company does have a really nice selection of meats. Check them out, I've had their briskets, their tri-tips, their picanha, it's all absolutely fantastic. And my favorite part of E3 Company is that they are big supporters of our military. So the reason I'm using this chuck roast is because there's very little fat in chuck roast, okay? You don't really need to get a fatty meat for this recipe. In fact, I'm gonna take off some of the fatty pieces. And these cubes can be as big or as little as you want. Now these are gonna shrink down a little bit. So I want them kind of big. All right, just like that, we got about five pounds of cubed meat. I'm gonna move this aside and I'm gonna get my induction burner ready. Stay tuned. All right, so I've got my Heston Q induction burner and I gotta tell you, if you guys do any countertop cooking, this is the absolute best induction burner that money can buy. So I've got my Dutch oven right here. You gotta put something metal on the top of it. Hit the power button. I'm gonna set this to a medium high. Right around there. I'm gonna let it warm up. All right, so I'm gonna add about two tablespoons of beef tallow to my Dutch oven. It's gonna help brown the meat. All right, so I'm slowly gonna add the meat that we cubed up. That nice sizzle. Give this a good mix. All right, so I'm gonna brown this meat up for a few minutes and I'll bring you guys right back. All right, so our meat is browned up nicely. Check that out. Beautiful. So at this point, I'm gonna add a medium onion. This is a yellow onion that I diced up. By the time this carne guisada is ready, these onions are gonna be completely dissolved. Mix those onions in there really well. Just like that. All right, so now I'm gonna add our spices. I've got a tablespoon of garlic powder, tablespoon of onion powder, tablespoon of black pepper, tablespoon of salt. All right, the last ingredient, but the most important is ground cumin. I've got a tablespoon of that. So I might add a little bit more cumin once this is ready, but we will taste it and go from there. So I'm gonna mix this up really well. Man, this is smelling delicious already. Mm, mm, mm. So I had always heard about carne guisada, but I've never tried it. And when I was in South Texas, when we went to go cook for the families of Uvalde, Jordan and Eric from Camp House Barbecue actually bought some breakfast tacos over. And the minute I bit into it, I was in love. This stuff is absolutely delicious. Now they call them tacos. I call them burritos because they're big tacos but they are tacos down in South Texas. All right, so at this point, I'm gonna add about two cups of hot water. Actually, I'm gonna to try to fit all of this in here, which is four cups. Perfect, give this a good mix. So the two tablespoons of beef tallow that I added earlier are gonna play a very important role 
in making the gravy for the carne guisada later on in this cook. Because the steak tips and the roast are very lean, adding a little bit of fat is very important. So that's why I use beef tallow. All right, so we're just gonna let this come to a boil. All right, so the carne guisada has come to a boil. At this point, just gonna mix it up. I'm gonna cover up my Dutch oven and I'm gonna lower the temperature down to a low, which is gonna simmer our carne guisada for about two to three hours. I'll bring you guys back in a bit. Stay tuned. All right, so the total cook time has been an hour and a half. Let's take a look at our carne guisada. Man, I gotta tell you, this smells absolutely delicious. Oh man, this smells so good. All right, so I'm just gonna grab a piece of meat and give this a taste and see how we're doing on the seasonings. All right, so first of all, that meat is extremely tender already. So I'm gonna add a little bit more seasoning. I'm gonna add the Yoder Smokers beef rub. It does need a little bit more salt and this rub will take care of that. I'm also gonna add a can of fire roasted tomatoes. This came highly recommended from Eric at Camp House Barbecue's grandmother. She used to do it, so I'm not gonna ask any questions. And I'm also gonna add a little bit more cumin. Probably another teaspoon or so. Give this a good mix. Oh my goodness. It's like it woke up this carne guisada. I'm gonna turn the temperature up a little bit more and I'm gonna cook this for about an hour with the lid off and get some of this liquid to evaporate just a bit. We'll see you guys back in about an hour. All right, so now let's make some homemade tortillas and if you're from South Texas, you know exactly what this is. This is white wing tortilla mix. I gotta tell you, I think this is South Texas biggest kept secret for homemade tortillas and they come out absolutely delicious. So making these tortillas is super simple. I'm gonna add four cups of the white wing tortilla mix. To the mix, I'm gonna add one cup of warm water. And real simple, just get in there and knead it, put it all together. So this is a little bit sticky, so I'm gonna add just a little bit more flour mix. There we go, that should do it right there. I'm gonna add a little bit of flour to my countertop here. Now we're just gonna knead the dough for about five minutes. So the reason you wanna knead your dough is to get all those glutens to relax a little bit, which is gonna give us some nice, puffy flour tortillas. All right, so I've been kneading this dough for about five minutes now, and it's nice and smooth as you can see. This next step is just make it into a round ball. Grab your bowl. We're gonna let this rest for about 15 minutes. I'm gonna cover this up with a damp cloth, and I'll bring you guys right back. All right, so the dough's been resting for about 15 minutes. Look at that, nice and fluffy. All right, so this batch should make around 16 flour tortillas. So all you wanna do is grab a little bit of the dough and round it off, if you will. Just like this. I'm gonna pop them back inside the bowl. All right, so I'm gonna make around 16 of these dough balls and we'll see you guys at the stove. Stay tuned. All right, so I've got my tortilla press warming up on my stove and I do want to thank my buddy Jerry Luna for having this made for me. I believe this is a Chud inspired tortilla press. It is really hot. It's my first time using it, so we'll see how this goes. I'm gonna spread my dough out just a little bit. Flatten it out, if you will. Put it about three quarters of the way to the back, just like that. And lower down the press and press down on it. A 
it looks like it's stuck just a little bit. Again, this is my first one. This is my first time using this. Not too bad. Let that cook down just a little bit more. Nice looking tortilla. Let's make another one, see if we can get this better. All right, so I think I figured out this tortilla press. The key is to drop your dough ball without flattening it right in the middle. Press it down. Wait for a few screams. Open it up. And there you have it. Absolutely perfect. Check that out. Yes, sir. Gotta love them tortilla screams. It's almost perfectly round too. All right, the carne guisada has been cooking for about three hours and it is just about ready. Check this out. It smells so good in here. So we've lost about one and a half inches of water as you can see here from the edge. That's how much water has evaporated and that's exactly what you want. The meat is just starting to fall apart, which is perfect. So I'm just gonna move this aside. I've got half a cup of warm water and to that, I'm gonna add maybe three tablespoons of flour. This is the same flour, that white wing flour that I used to make the tortillas. This is a camp house barbecue secret right here. You know what, I'm gonna add one more tablespoon to this. There we go. Now that's a little bit thicker. So I'm gonna pour in about half of our flour and water mixture. This is gonna thicken up our carne guisada. We call that that South Texas gravy. Yes, sir. Look at that, that got really nice and thick. All right, I'm gonna add the rest of this. Oh my goodness. It like instantly gets thick. Let me show you how tender this meat is already. Look at that. That is perfect. All right, so I'm gonna let this cook down for about 15 more minutes and I'll bring you guys right back. All right, so the carne guisada is ready. My flour tortillas are ready. Let's make some tacos. Check them out. These flour tortillas came out pretty darn good. Got my carne guisada right here. You want a little bit of gravy in your taco. Oh my goodness. Check that out. Yes, sir. Make one for my daughter as well. Look at that. Gotta have that gravy in that taco. Let's give this a taste. All right, let's give this carne guisada taco a try. Check that out. Nice, warm, stewed beef. Man, this is gonna be good. Here we go. Mmm, holy smokes guys, this carne guisada taco reminds me so much of when I was in South Texas about a month and a half ago. This is delicious. So by the way, I did add another teaspoon or so of cumin. So add about one and a half tablespoons to your carne guisada if you're gonna try this recipe at home. I can't believe I waited this long to try and make carne guisada. I gotta tell you, if you guys have never tried this, you have got to make it. It is so simple and so delicious. I want to thank Eric from Camp House Barbecue for introducing me to carne guisada and our friend Jordan for bringing us those breakfast tacos that one morning when I was in South Texas about a month and a half ago. Make sure you check out Eric's channel. He's got an amazing carne guisada video. And I also saw Rick's video from Rick's Barbecue and Specialties. He also has a carne guisada video and they're both from South Texas. I hope you guys enjoyed this carne guisada video. If this is your first time to my channel, do me a favor, hit that subscribe button. And if you enjoyed this video, give me a thumbs up. Until next time, Joe with Smoking Joe's Pit Barbecue. See ya.